Two years. That's how long it took me to learn how to code to a point where I could build and ship just about any product idea. But if I were learning how to code today, knowing what I know now, I could probably get there in half the time. So I've got five strategies that I recommend you take advantage of if you want to become a full stack software product developer in less than a year. I'm Brian Castle. I'm a multi-time founder and I'm a full stack product designer and developer. On this channel, I wanna help you make the same transition that I made going from a job to freelancing to building a products business. So if that's for you, come on and subscribe, let's go. Okay, so here is your roadmap to learn how to code and start building your own apps this year. Strategy number one, the term full stack developer can seem pretty daunting. Usually what people mean when they call themselves a full stack developer is they mean that they're proficient in all of the individual technologies that stack up to make a software product. That usually includes user interface and design chops, HTML and CSS, JavaScript. It usually includes multiple backend programming languages like PHP or Ruby or Python. It would include databases like Postgres and MySQL and server infrastructure and Git and development workflows and lots of little things in between all of that. But here's the thing. If you wanna be hired as a senior software engineer at a big technology company, then yeah, you probably need to have a firm grasp on all of those things. But if you're like me and you just wanna design and build and ship and bootstrap your own products, then I've got good news for you and less good news for you. The less good news is you do have to make your way through that list to understand full stack development. The better news, you don't have to be proficient in everything on that list. The reality is some of those items are really important and you won't get very far in building products without a firm grasp. But for some of those items, you could get by with a surface level understanding of what it is. My motto for those items, just enough to ship. So let's run down that list again. And for each one, I'll tell you whether you need a confident command of that technology, or if you can be beginner level, but productive with it, or if you can get by with a just enough to ship mentality. All right, let's start with user interface and design chops. You'll need at least a beginner level and productive skill set in order to design and build your own products. So you might even be coming from a background as a designer like I did. In that case, you're good to go. But even non-designers tend to have a pretty good design sense. How about front end HTML and CSS? I'm going to say that you do need a confident command of these. But the good news, these are probably the easiest types of coding to learn. All right, JavaScript. Now, most people consider JavaScript to be part of front-end development, and that's because JavaScript mostly functions in the browser, or as some people call it, the client side, and it handles a lot of the interaction that users see on the screen. But I don't like to lump JavaScript in with HTML and CSS because JavaScript is really a programming language, whereas HTML and CSS are more of a design language but you will absolutely use JavaScript in your journey to building apps. So you'll need at least a beginner level understanding of how to use it. Now, when you're starting out, I would not get hung up on going too far beyond the beginner level skill set with JavaScript because it can get super complex. The more that you build, the more projects and products that you work on, the better you're naturally going to become with JavaScript. All right, back-end programming languages like PHP or Ruby or Python. Now, experienced engineers typically have a firm grasp of multiple languages, and they have the ability to easily pick up new languages at will. But for your purposes of building and shipping your own products, I recommend going deep on one language and gaining a confident command of building with that one language. I'd go so far as to say that you can completely ignore and spend zero time learning and dabbling in languages other than the one that you chose to learn. You're much better off 
getting really comfortable with one language and building and shipping in that language again and again. Now, picking a language to learn and commit to, that's a topic for another video. So if you have any questions about that, leave them in the comments and I will cover that in a video soon. All right, databases like Postgres and MySQL and managing server infrastructure. So when it comes to databases, similar to choosing a backend programming language, you'll probably settle on one type of database to use for at least all of the early apps and products that you would build. And the same goes for choosing a hosting provider and all of the tooling that goes into actually running your app. Now, in my experience, this is one of those areas where you could get by with a just enough to ship mentality. You should understand what each of the pieces are and how they work, but you could rely on tools and services that make implementing these pieces a lot easier. And the last piece that I'll touch on here in your stack is using Git and your general development workflow. Now, Git is the standard when it comes to version control. That's essential for saving and committing and reverting code and for collaborating with other developers and making sure that you don't overwrite each other's work. So you'll definitely need at least a beginner level understanding of how to use Git in your day-to-day -day workflow. But like most things, you can go super deep with Git, but you probably don't need to. You'll just need to familiarize with a few really common day-to-day -day tasks that you'll be using in the Git development workflow. Okay, so I've got four more strategies to guide your roadmap as you learn to code. Now these will be a little bit quicker, but don't skip over these because I know from experience how much of an impact these will make for you. All right, so here's strategy number two. As you learn full stack development piece by piece, you're gonna have a lot of information thrown at you all at once. So you're gonna need to learn and relearn and see and try things multiple times before they stick for you. But you'll start to notice that some of the things that you're learning are things that you'll use repeatedly on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, there are just a few Git commands that you'll be typing into terminal every single day, multiple times. Or there's a series of things that you'll need to fire up every time you start a new project with a new code base. So your goal is to learn how to build and ship things quickly. So you don't want to have to constantly relearn and refresh your memory on all the things that you need to reach for on a day-to-day -day basis. So my strategy here for you is to build your cheat sheet. Your cheat sheet is a document or a series of notes where you're storing things that you know that you're gonna to need to come back to on a repeated basis. So if you don't have these things in your muscle memory already, you know that you have your cheat sheet to go to to grab that Git command that you need to remember or that piece of code that you need to use again and again. And that just lets you keep moving fast, keep building. Third strategy. Oh man, I wish this was a thing when I was learning how to code because when I got started in my learn to code journey, I got stuck 50 times a day. I would bang my head against the desk. I would be searching on Google and Stack Overflow and all these other places to try to get unstuck because things are just not working and I'm stuck. That happened all the time. I would be stuck for hours, sometimes days, even weeks at a time. What made it even harder was I was so new at this that I didn't even know the search terms to look for or the questions to ask that could unblock me. Today, we have AI. You're going to use it, probably on a daily basis in your development workflow. Now, the misconception with AI is that it could build entire functioning apps and there's really no need for us to even learn how to code. We're not in that world, at least not yet. But tools like ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot are indispensable at this point. There's so much we can talk about when it comes to using AI in the full stack development workflow. But for your purposes, when you're just learning, AI is your best friend when you're stuck. And boy, will you be stuck often. So that's strategy number three. Use AI to get unstuck. Strategy number four. Even once you gain a grasp of the basics and you're technically able to build a basic app, 
you'll still lack the experience of a seasoned engineer. So you won't have knowledge of the common design patterns when it comes to building things. For example, let's say you want to build an app where users can invite team members and users can be members of multiple teams across multiple accounts. You might be able to figure out the nuts and bolts of how to put that type of system together. But a seasoned engineer would know that this type of architecture is something known as multi-tenancy. And there are battle-tested design patterns that are optimal for building this type of thing. You'll run into lots of situations like this as you get into it. And so this is where working with a coach is incredibly valuable. Courses and YouTube will give you the building blocks. AI will help you get unstuck. An experienced coach will fast track you to gaining that experience and help you build and ship better products. All right, the last strategy, number five. At the very beginning, you'll only be going through lessons and tutorials. Essentially, you're going through the motions. But as soon as you possibly can, your goal should be to build your own practice projects. Now, the tutorials will walk you through some practice projects, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about you coming up with your own practice project ideas and setting out to build them entirely yourself based on what you know so far. You should be doing this before you're even ready because here's what's gonna happen. You'll be building one of your own practice projects. Let's say it's a simple to-do list app and inevitably you'll get stuck. So then you'll search for the answer, you'll Google, you'll ask AI, you'll try things, you'll experiment, you'll look for examples to see how other people have built this specific thing. So doing these practice projects again and again, that's what's really going to accelerate your ability to learn to code and learn how to build products. And inside of one year, my challenge to you is to make your next practice project, not one of those throwaway practice projects, but make it a real product that you intend to build and ship to real customers. So those strategies should help you speed up your learn to code roadmap and do it within one year. But you might be wondering, is it really worth it to spend all this time and all this effort? Well, I have another video that I invite you to watch. It's where I share the story of how the year that I learned how to code changed everything. I'll see you there.